Thank you, Vice President, Honorable Members, dear ladies and gentlemen. Once again, uh, I thank you for this important debate on the impact of COVID-19 on long-term care facilities. Those affected include the elderly. And I take this opportunity to welcome the work of the German Presidency on the rights of the elderly in digitalization, which was uh, maybe one or two members mentioned this. Member states are aware that active aging also means being able to fully participate in society. Today, we inhabit a more digitalized world. Digitalization and technology helps older people in their autonomy and ability to connect with others. It also raises issues on the right to privacy. This calls for action in increasing digital literacy for older people. Digital tools must be accessible and easy to use for all ages. Those who are unable to use them must be provided with alternative ways of accessing essential services. The fundamental rights and values of the European Union are in indivisible, universal values of human dignity, freedom, equality and solidarity. These rights are valid throughout the whole life cycle, from birth to death. In my role as Vice President for Democracy and Demography, the whole of the life cycle is the focus on my work, of my work, and I have to think about the most vulnerable in our policy making, particularly when we consider long-term care facilities. I see that you share uh, these views and would like to address some points raised here today. There were questions on Article 19 uh, by uh, MAP uh, METS on implementation and on funding. I would like to answer that Commission is committed to the entire European pillar of social rights. In order to deliver, we will present next year on an action plan on the implementation of the European pillar of social rights. Regarding funding, so uh, there was uh, someone said that uh, there is no reference in the Treaty on European uh, Union uh, uh, responsibilities, but there is. Coronavirus Response Investment Initiative, and there is, of course, European Union Recovery and Resilience Facility. Then, I, as I mentioned in my introductory statement, there is REACT EU. But also, we, uh, we don't, don't forget that we are negotiating the uh, multi-annual financial framework. Also, of course, uh, there is a uh, European Social Fund. And, of course, I'm uh, uh, aligned with those who said that European semester, semester can be, uh, uh, can be uh, also one of the tools. Uh, Commissioner, uh, Member of Parliament Bergletz mentioned the quality standards for, for long-term care. Of course, uh, I uh, mentioned at the beginning green paper uh, consultation, so let's, let's discuss which measures are required and which level, what at European level, what can be required at member state level. And of course, uh, we will need to take a close look at uh, long-term care indeed. And I'm, in to totally, uh, I'm totally in alignment with you. Regarding strong role for European Union in healthcare and long-term care, you remember uh, the state of address uh, of our President Ursula von der Leyen, which was held here two weeks ago, and uh, uh, she mentioned health. So let's use the Conference on the Future of Europe to discuss the role of health and uh, uh, the role of European Union and uh, uh, what can we do and what can we improve, because all of you... Uh, uh, almost all of you were talking about this. So I think this, uh, this conference, the Future of Europe, will be launched, which will be launched soon, maybe one of the uh, instruments how we can, uh, how we can uh, de debate this important issue. COVID-19 pandemic exposed gap in long-term care, showing a lack of coordination of services between healthcare and long-term care providers. And of course, this resulted in difficulties for home residents to access health services, including patients with COVID-19 and patients with chronic conditions. The pandemic and containment measures also intensified loneliness. Many of you mentioned loneliness, solitude, isolation. So we are completely aware that loneliness is a phenomenon and we will definitely tackle this issue. Of course, psychological distress is here too, not only among older people, but among all users of these facilities. 
and the service providers themselves, the carers, have had to work under extremely difficult conditions, improvising on many levels in their efforts to go, to go above and beyond the call of duty. Effective care management through the involvement and collaboration of clinicians, patients, users, and caregivers is necessary. It can form the cornerstone in the transformation of health and long-term care systems in providing services that are adapted to the needs, values, and preferences of the users while supporting the providers. Uh, once again, I cannot forget the images of isolation, loneliness, and grief that emerged from our long-term care homes across the European Union. In some places, it is still happening we must strive to ensure that no one has to experience the loss of loved one in such a traumatic way ever again. By pulling together, we can demonstrate the value of our solidarity by providing the long-term care sector with the support they need, which in turn helps build a better society for all of us. This requires efforts on all sides, as all, uh, many of you said, at European level, at member state level, among regional and local authorities, and yes, as so, so societal, societal and individual level. So thank you once again for this debate and looking forward to, to cooperation in future. Thank you, Madam Vice President. The debate is closed.